Hi, so in the last video we derived a few equations regarding the solo growth model. Uh, in this video I'm going to graphically show how we converge to steady state and then also discuss why we converge to the steady state again using graphs. In a future video I will show this, uh, give an example and derive this algebraically but this is just good for intuition to show it graphically. So in the previous video we derived this result which is our law of motion of capital. So if we want to derive the steady state of the solar growth model uh, this is where we're basically saying that we have investment just enough to cover depreciation. Uh, so this term here is our investment term and here we have depreciation of capital. So if we set them equal, we're saying that investment is exactly equal to depreciation. And so we are at steady state because the change in the capital stock will then be zero. We don't gain any capital, we don't lose any capital, we're just investing just enough to replenish the lost capital that has been lost due to depreciation. Uh, so this will we will be in steady state at some level of capital per capita K star and we call this the steady state capital per worker. So let's show this graphically first. If we wanted to find the steady state capital stock per worker we first want to draw this graph. So one term that we need is investment which we said was the savings rate multiplied by the function of output per capita. So I've uh, just drawn up these axes. Here we have y output per capita on the y axis and on the x axis we have lowercase k which is capital per worker. Now we've drawn on fk which is our production function uh, in terms of capital per capita we we found that we could uh, do this in the previous video and if we just multiply by the constant fraction savings we will get a function that looks a bit like this it's just it's just a transformation of the production function this production function exhibits the properties that it's positive so it's always increasing in so as we increase capital per capita we always increase output but at a diminishing rate at the start we have a fairly steep curve and then as we get towards the end it's a flat curve due to diminishing returns. Okay that's all well and good. Uh, so we've drawn this curve on now just for a bit more intuition let's choose a random a random k uh, let's call it k1. Now if we're here if we have this level of k we have this level of output per capita. Uh, this S curve, SFK, gives us the amount of investment per capita. And the area above it gives us the consumption per capita. And so this is basically our equation that we also found before, y equals c plus i. That's just a bit more intuition of where these curves are coming from. So the other term we are interested in examining is this delta k term for depreciation. So on the y-axis here we have delta k and on the x-axis we still have capital per capita. So this is a very simple function, it's just a linear function and that's an interesting part of the solar model that we have linear depreciation and a constant fraction of the capital per capita depreciates every period. So if we move along the x-axis by one unit, we increase depreciation by delta. Uh, we have, so we have diminishing returns to the production function and thus to our investment function, whereas we have constant um, depreciation. This means that at some point these two curves are going to intersect and so we will have a steady state level of capital per person. 
So let's put those two graphs on the same set of axes. So on the y-axis we have investment and depreciation, whereas on the x-axis we have the same uh, just k capital per person or capital per capita. This means that we can plot both of these graphs together and what do you know, these graphs do intersect for the reasons I just gave. Uh, so at this point here we see that depreciation given by delta k is equal to investment which is s times f of k. Uh, so when those two are equal we are in steady state. We thus have the change in k equal to zero and this is the k star. This is our steady state capital stock per worker. Quite simple really if depreciation equals investment our capital stock isn't changing so we are in steady state. Let's discuss a bit of convergence now. So imagine we are not at K star, we are somewhere way off, we are over here, we are at K1. So we are at this capital level, which means that we have this level of investment, I, and this level of depreciation. Depreciation. So how have we uh, come to this conclusion, we're at this level of k, so this is what this graph is showing. This S of FK graph is showing that at each level of k, this is how much investment we have. If we're at k1, we have this level of investment. When we're at k1, this depreciation graph is showing at k1 we have this level of depreciation. So this is I1, this is depreciation 1. So. Clearly investment at this point is higher than depreciation and this remaining area is our change in K and clearly change in K is greater than zero. More investment than depreciation so our K changes a positive amount. So this change in K we will plot say here and we move to K2 in the next period because we have increased the level of K because we have more investment than depreciation, we move to K2. And we do the process again. At K2, we have this much investment and this much depreciation. And again, we still see that investment, the investment curve is above the depreciation curve. So we have another change in our capital stock that is positive. So we move again. We move to K3 and the process repeats. And you can see that it's just the gap between the investment and depreciation curves, which is our change in K. So the larger the gap between the curves, the more our capital stock changes in the next period. And as long as we're on the left hand side of the steady state, we are going to have the investment curve above the depreciation curve. So our Cap changing capital stock is going to be positive if we're on the left hand side of the steady state. If however we're on the right hand side of the steady state, let's say we're at capital uh, 4 over here, uh, let's have a look. At this level of capital, of capital stock we have depreciation all the way up here. We have loads of depreciation, we've got a very large capital stock so it depreciates a lot. So we have linear depreciation. However, we have diminishing returns to production, so we only get this much production out of this level of capital. So investment is down here, and depreciation is all of this. So our change in K is here, but what do we notice? Depreciation is now greater than investment, so our change in K is negative, less than zero. What does this mean? We decrease the amount of K we have, so we move to say K5, we move to K5, and at this level of K5 we see that depreciation, the depreciation curve is again above the investment curve, so our capital stock is depreciating more than we're replenishing it, so the capital stock keeps de decreasing, decreasing, until we get to K star, which is where our change in K equals zero. Change in K equals zero. Uh, so that is convergence. If we're on the left hand side of our steady state, if our capital stock is less than the steady state, we 
our capital stock will increase. That's the dynamics we have. And if we have a higher capital stock, a steady state, our capital stock will decrease. So wherever we are, we are converging to the steady state. Converge, converge. And the speed of convergence is greater the further away from the steady state we are. Because the amount we converge is given by the distance between these two curves. As we said, this change in k is the difference between the curves. So if we're far away from the curves, then there is a, there is a large difference between the curves. But if we're close to the steady state around here, you can see this difference between the curves is smaller. Our change in k here gets smaller and smaller the closer we get to the steady state. If we're really far away, our change in k is large. So if you're far from steady state, you will converge quickly towards it. If you're close to the steady state, you will converge slowly towards it. But we always converge to steady state in the solo model. And that's how we show it graphically. So that's about it for showing it graphically. In a future video, I will show how to derive these algebraically. So make sure to check out the playlist for that. And yeah, drop a like and subscribe, of course.